What is up, Internet? So this is Ryan Gatowski, and Isaac, why don't you introduce yourself? Howdy, folks. I'm Isaac Villa from Gaming with Sidekicks. Um, nice to see you. Good evening. Yeah, and I'm Ryan Gatowski with One Board Family. And uh, Isaac, I reached out to you earlier this week. I don't know why I kind of had this inspiration of, you know what? I think that it would be cool to, in 2021, just get together and talk about games. And we've we've both, both of our channels, both Gaming with Sidekicks and One Board Family, we kind of focus on gaming with, gaming with multiple generations. And so I thought it would be a pretty cool, pretty cool fit. So absolutely. Yeah, it's fun. We had a, we had a good time getting together with um, both Andrew and Anitra to mm -hmm. do our, our top five of 2020. And uh, we thought, what if we could get both baritones together and see what that looks like? There we go. Uh, <laughs> this way, crank up the bass because uh, we'll take you on a ride. So this is going to be, hopefully it'll be a monthly thing where we get together and we talk about games. Um, and so we'll have, we'll have some themes from time to time. Uh, we'll have some, uh, you know, beginning of the year, we'll obviously talk about some things that we maybe didn't get to in 2020 and uh, some things that we are playing right now in 2021. So um, we'll just we'll just kick it off with a little background on on our experiences with gaming. Right. So. Yeah, so, absolutely. Isaac, when did you start gaming, man? So um, I don't. And I, I don't know how old you are. Um, we both we both got a little gray in the beard. I think you're a little younger. I'll go ahead. I'm <laughs> I'm celebrating a milestone birthday uh, this summer. So okay, um, all right. So big three zero. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, add ten years to that, and we're good. So well, uh, then I am the elder statesman here, sir. I am older than that. Oh, I, okay, uh, okay. I just just celebrated my birthday here, uh, December thirty first. Nice. Um, I just turned 42. So okay, cool. I got you by a couple of years. A um, couple of years. But, but so for, uh, you know, playing, been playing games as long as I can think of, uh, as long as I can remember. Uh, we have played, it was my sister and I growing up with my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And you know, we played we played the traditionals, right? We had our well-worn copy of Monopoly, Scrabble. I still yeah. have those games downstairs in my collection. Um, we played all upwards. Did you have a oh, copy yeah. of upwards? Oh, for I sure. Loved, like upwards was my jam. I didn't uh -huh. like Scrabble. Um, you know, up, uh, upwards got played. Racco got played a lot. I don't okay. know if you're familiar with Racco. I don't know Racco. Switching the cards. My uh, my first like taste I remember as a kid of like a like uh, hobby game was actually playing um, the uh, the Amazing Labyrinth. And okay. I, I love Amazing Labyrinth. I love the mechanic of that game. Nice. I, I've kind of got a game I've been designing with that mechanic in mind that I've, that I've been kind of playing around with for a while, but I love the shifting nature of that board and, um, you know, grew up playing stuff like that. I have downstairs my copy of the X-Men with all the minis from like 1990. I remember that, that. I got because of the cartoon, right? I yeah, love, yeah. love the cartoon and, um, you know, just, just playing those games slowly as a kid. Like we played with the grandparents, we played dominoes. I would play a lot of Mexican dominoes on my dad's yeah. side of the family. Like we, you know, we played a lot of that stuff and just, you know, it was good. It was good family time, right? Like absolutely, yeah. not everybody had a device in hand. It was just a good way to, to spend some time together. Yeah. I, I remember one of my favorite memories about a game, a specific game was Kerplunk. So my dad, I don't know if he was on a business trip or he was out of town for some reason, but he had, uh, when he came back into town, he brought a copy of Kerplunk home and completely surprised us. So we didn't play games uh, a ton, but it was like when we did, it was important. Mm -hmm. I remember my parents teaching me their copy of Stop Thief because they they bought Stop Thief, I think, in 79 at a Toys R Us. And I've still got, I've got their copy. That's awesome. Um, and it's still got the Toys R Us, like, bright orange sticker that's like, Twenty dollars, which is a ridiculous price to pay for a game at that time. <laughs> uh, it was like, uh, what are you, multi millionaires? <laughs> um, but yeah, they taught me that, and uh, played sequence with my grandmother a lot. Uh, she taught us sequence, and it's still a game. I think I still have her copy of sequence, and so um, yeah, I, I love gaming as a kid. And it was, uh, we would go to our friend's house. I think they had a copy of Fireball Island. They had a copy. Yeah. My brother had a copy of Splat, which was uh, you made Play-Doh, little Play-Doh uh, 
uh, roaches and stuff. And you would go around. I think it was a roll and move or spin and move. And you would go around with a boot and stomp on them. Uh, That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So gaming was big when I was a kid. That might be another fun one. We may have to do a little retro, like what's in your collection. That's uh, that's old. Yeah. I'm I'm sure you've got a few older games sitting around too, that uh, invoke some interesting memories. Absolutely. We've got some people in the chat. Helena Capel. Hey, how's it going? Bob loving on the racco. So uh, very cool. Um, so yeah. So as far as what, what kind of games do you and your family play? I think that our kids, I uh, think your oldest is around the same age as my oldest and you may have a younger. Uh, so I've got 12 to 17. Yeah, and I got 17 and 14 at home. Okay. So we're kind of in that same age range. We don't have the right. little, little ones anymore. Yeah. So what's what's gaming look like for you guys now? Like what's 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 hitting the table right now? Yeah, That's yeah. Funny. Because here's here's the crazy part. When they hit teenage, you know, teenage those teenage years, it's like all the all the love of gaming that they had when they were like eight, nine, ten years old, it's gone. Like, I don't know what happened to it. You know, they'll only play specific things and it's like, oh, that lasts too long. And my, my son is still my number one. Uh, you know, I play a lot with my wife, play a ton of games with my wife, but my son is still my number one, like play test guy. Cause my wife will take a little, little, little encouragement to play something new. My son, I'll put something new on the table and he's like, all right, let's go. Let's learn this thing. Nice. Drop the kingdom rush box. Right. And I'm like, you want to learn this? He's like, heck yeah, I want to learn this. So. That's really um, good. That's awesome. My, my daughter, the theme is is big. Like it's got to be a game that looks interesting to her. And my wife to a point also, but like we uh I kind of threw a few games on the table, but um this is getting a ton of play in our house. Jurassic Park so good. Because one this game is pretty, mm-hmm. right? Like it's just the art's beautiful, the game's fun, it's simple, right? We can chat. You know, we set this up Sunday night. We asked my daughter, my wife and I, you want to play a game? got this out 20 minutes we can just chat a little bit you know yeah. and, it's, and it's a lot of fun like that that's getting a lot of play in our house that's really cool so jurassic parts we we saw it in its prototype phase we played it with uh, chad he came over for a game night he lives about an hour and a half away and we were nice. we were doing some work uh with chad and he brought it over and to see where that game came from with the prototype and then the finished version it's it's that game is fantastic and I think what I love about Jurassic Parks is that every time I play it, I find another little thing that I'm like, oh man, <laughs> I really enjoy this. You know, yeah, there's another little thing to like about it. Yeah, I love that one. So that one's been getting some play. Um, another one where, uh, and I've seen a lot of people talk about this, but I finally got it. it cr- Christmas, I don't know if it's the same for you, but like, uh, you know, do you want some games? Like uh, I get a lot of games. I have a lot of games. Yeah. But this is one I've, I've seen and I had to add to the collection because we'd never played it is strike. Where's my copy um, of strike? We <laughs> bought it. We bought it the day after Christmas. Yeah. Right. So, you, so you're pretty new to, to it in your house too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, and so gaming with my parents, my mom, <laughs> when we went on a little vacation with my parents during November, my mom played wingspan. My mom okay. played Pan Am, you know, she's like, she's the nice. retiree who's like, I'll jump into it. She says she doesn't understand it. She says she doesn't know how to play. And then she ends up winning. <laughs> Whereas my dad, my dad's like, I want to throw dice and I want the dice to tell me what I'm supposed to do. Right. I don't want to think, I don't want to do math. And so we bought strike, we brought strike to their house and they fell in love with it. They bought a copy of strike like the next day. That's so, awesome. We'll have to yeah. we'll have to do a family uh, playing with parents chat because my parents come over every Sunday. Uh, we do church together. We have some lunch and yeah. then get out games. And and I've had some games have been a hit, and other games have been like, uh, and like my dad, his favorite game is Code Names Pictures. Like he goes nuts really? to Code Games Pictures. He liked Strike too, but it's finding that like six player game, and the kids will all play and. You know, we had three generations sitting at the table playing board games. Like that's makes, so cool. Makes my heart full. Right? Like that's so cool. Really cool. And um, strike is was an easy one. Easy, quick. We can chat. We can do silly stuff with it. So yeah. Um, so Bob, 
Yeah. I'll put in the chat, do you have that cool promo for Jurassic Park? I oh, don't know the, if you... the one Bob was going to send me? I don't, Bob. Okay, <laughs> so because Bob can't send it to you, I'll send it to you. Thank goodness. See, Ryan said, do you want to do something with one board family? I thought, oh. If is it Bob? And he's like, no, it'll be me. I'm like, yes, I'm in. <laughs> so actually, anybody who's watching this, if you're interested, the One Dino Podcast, which is a an exclusive promo card uh, that was printed for one board family. So it's got our logo on there for Jurassic Parks. If you are interested in getting one of these exclusive cards, uh, shoot us a note at One Board Family, and we'll send one out to you. So um, we've got some over here. We'll send one. We'll send one to you, Isaac. Awesome. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so I grabbed I grab three. Those two have gotten some play. And mm -hmm. um, so I, I was going to, I was going to put a honey buzz on the table, but that's an easy pick. It's pretty, yeah. it's a good one. But this one, I reach a little bit uh, from whiz kids. It's a new release from them. I don't know if you're familiar at all with it. It's a great, the Great Cake Escape. I don't know anything about this. So I love games that do table presents okay. this way, right? Yeah. Like uh, like Drop It. Yeah, this yeah. Thing, when you take it up out and set it up, it is literally a cake. What? Like you are setting up three layers of a cake yeah. that you connect. And then you're you've got this the, all these little parts of um, that's of awesome. contraband that you're trying to slide into the cake and have all your stuff end up in there. So you got you know chainsaws, you got pickaxe, dynamite, and you're trying to sneak it in the cake so that it ends up getting into the bakery and yeah. you're putting other people's stuff out. It's a blast. It's silly. It's light. It takes 30 seconds to teach somebody how to play this, but that is uh, amazing. It's so much fun. Highly, highly recommend you look for this. WizKids is putting out a lot of games. Yeah. There's some really fun, easy, light family games. And this one is is a Man, great, great that is super pickup. cool. I had not heard anything about that. Now I need to now I need to find a copy of that. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun one. And the best part, the designer. I don't know him personally, mm -hmm. but the cake game. Made by a guy named Treat. So J Very Treat. Very cool. J, J Treat. Treat making the key case. So it's it, you know, it's all thematic. That's really cool. That's super cool. So so do you want me to get into some of the games that we're we're playing yeah, right now? Absolutely. What that's what I was gonna ask you. What's what's rolling on your table? Yeah, so um like what you said with Christmas, you know, it's like, do you want some games? And Justin Gibbons, what's up? Hello, hey, sir. Justin. Um so everybody always asks, what do you want? And I have a running, you know, uh, Amazon list because there's always something that I'm like, oh man, I really want that. Or that's su super cool. But this was actually one of only two games that I got for Christmas, Metro X. Nice. Uh, and so Aaron got this one for me. Um, and so this has been really neat because it's dry erase boards. It's a flip and write from Game Right Games. Right. Um, and you're flipping the cards out um, and it's only 12, 18, 12, 15 cards, somewhere around there. You're flipping out these cards and you're, you're crossing off parts of a line of these different, uh, train, uh, subway trains and Thanks. you're blocking yourself in and you're having to think, okay, if I do this, am I going to have enough spaces to go when the skip cards come out? Am I going to be able to, you know, get around what I've already done? Um, What's cool about Metro X is we sit on the couch now and that's what we bust out. You know, we, we flip out the cards. We have them sitting on the armrest of the, of the couch yeah, nice. and we each have our boards. We're sipping our coffee. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, and it's, it's been a nice, it's been a nice, not too heavy portable game. Right. So. That's great. How many players does that go? Uh, it supports six. Oh, good. Check not that great. out. There we go. There's your six player game. So it's got, hey, I like that. Yeah. Dry erase, all that stuff. And it's got two sides. We actually haven't played the back side, which is Tube Town, which is a little harder uh, to play. So we'll probably be playing that one pretty soon. And then um, 25th Century Games coming coming up again. So uh -oh. Kohaku, oh. we finally got our Kickstarter, uh, this fulfilled through Kickstarter. And, uh, ooh, man, it's a good game. Uh, the tiles are beautiful. 
we did an unboxing the other day. Me and Bob did an unboxing the other day just so that we could play it together. Me and my wife could play it. We played it this past weekend. Uh, really, really good. So that's awesome. I uh, I was actually gonna I was gonna tell you that I got a a box from from Chad over here. So that must be what uh, must be what's in here. It sounds like tiles. So okay, I'm guessing. Nice. Uh, I haven't cracked it open yet, but very cool. Very cool. Um, what game surprised you? in 2020 so or what game has surprised your family so um it you know it's interesting with 2020 you think like we haven't i think the uh, the assumption i made and I, I like to track my games do you track your games do you use the i do yeah track? we use yeah. EG stats and yeah, so same. i'm pretty meticulous about it yeah same thing track them all i don't really track like uh like if we're gonna play like um uh, like an online version of ticket or like an app version of ticket to ride. I don't track yeah. my Star realms games, mm -hmm. but, but everything else we track. And yep. I was yep. surprised at how many games I still played this year. I think it's because I had a lot of family time, yeah. a lot of time together. And um, so we got to play a lot of new stuff to us. And yeah. uh, you know, as a reviewer, there's some stuff you get that you're like, mm, all right, I, I'll try this. I'll see yeah. if I like it. I may not like it. I mean, I can talk the family into it. Um, there was one in particular. My wife is not an escape room game board game fan. Mm -hmm. She likes escape room. She doesn't like the board games. Uh, but I said, let's get the same game. with my wife. Yeah. yeah. So I said, let's. She's played an exit game. Didn't care for it. Mm -hmm. She's played. Uh, what's the other one with the keys? Um, uh, escape the room. Escape the room. Yeah, she kind of yeah, likes that one. Over there. Yeah, but I think with too many people, it gets a little too crowded. Yeah. Right? But we played. This is a family, and I gotta say. It was my favorite surprise of such a fun game. So good. This was so much fun. So good. Oh, yeah, like Justin said, the unlock games. We tried those. She yes. Like those either. But I this, like unlocked. Aaron doesn't. Yeah. So, think, yeah. This felt like, okay, guys, we're going to play a really, really light RPG. And everyone was into it that night. Everyone was having yeah. fun. Voices were being done. Like Absolutely. It was, it, and it felt like everyone had a role in this. Mm -hmm. and it wasn't a co-op alpha like some escape rooms tend to be. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm, I'm telling if you if you want to give an escape room game a, a turn with family, because uh, this is uh, uh, Jay Cormier, right? And mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Sen Fong Lim put mm -hmm. this together. This is a blast to play with. Your so family. good. And this this surprised me probably because I didn't expect they were going to have such a good time playing it. I expected a good time. Right, but I didn't yeah. expect it to be as like, oh my gosh, that was that was a fun couple hours. Yeah, so I, I'm in the exact same boat. Actually, we got a copy of that and Hughes and Cues from the op. Oh, yeah. I fell in love with Hughes and Cues. The whole family fell in love with Hughes yeah, and Cues. We played it all the time. We played it online with people. We played it through uh, Zoom, all that. And then that I was actually Rick actually was supposed to do the review for us for that game. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to see Rick for a while because of the pandemic. I'm just going to bust it out. I'll pack it all back together and give it to Rick. Right. Oh, man, it was so good. Aaron and I played, I think, on a Monday and maybe on a Friday. Like, we, there was a couple days. We broke it into two days. Um, and it was really, really good. And it, I think that what's cool about it is when you, when you have an experience like that, you wish you could just, like, mind erase for a second like men in black mind erase right so that you could go through the experience again you know yeah no for sure that was a yeah. that was a blast um, Rick said that's being that's called being selfish yes rick i was being selfish so just justin said mystery house is that so is that i don't know mystery house is that um mystery mansion justin is it mystery house well this one's haunted mansion Oh, that's the haunted. Okay, yeah, yeah. the QBD one's haunted mansion. He's saying, talking about something about mystery house. I'm not. I don't know that mystery one. Mystery house is yeah. that the one? Um, Justin, you might be able to say it in the chat. It um, is that the one where you have you're looking through the house. It's like a three D three dimensional house. You're oh, looking yeah. through the slots and different pieces. I think that might be what he's talking about. Okay, I do remember seeing that. Nice. So, yeah, that's yeah. That one sounds like a good one too, but the, that one definitely surprised us. So yeah, how about you yeah. guys? Did you, have a, did you have a big surprise? Surprise came at the end of the year, uh, and we actually, our review for this actually just went up today. Um, okay. But Sacred Rites, okay? Mm -hmm. It's 
it, it looks very cool. Okay, yeah. So Justin, that is the one that he was talking. He was talking about the one where it's a three D house. You have like little slots where you put put little walls in, and you look through. It's pretty interesting. Um, Sacred Rights is a very unique game, and it's hard because if you if you just pitch it like 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 it is, um, Sacred Rights is about being in a cult. And so it's a, it's hard to pitch this game to anybody and be like, no, 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 not like that. Um, so everybody at the table gets these little envelopes and your envelope either has a window in it and I'll show you what they look like. They either have a window in it or they don't. So the window, see that little window? Okay. Where So you slide a card in there. Let's see. Slide this card in here. Thunder. And you see the word, right? Yeah. Okay. So if you don't have that window, it says outsider. Okay. So you're sliding the card in face down. And you look at it. And you don't see what the word is. So everybody at the table who has one of the windowed cards knows what that word is. The people who are outsiders have to try to figure it out, okay? And so people are going around the table and they have to share a tradition. So um, maybe season, okay? So season might be the tradition that you pick. These okay. are like uh, wooden tiles. Maybe season, maybe you do something like uh, fall, you know, for thunder because there's a lot of thunderstorms in the fall or whatever, okay? And so the tradition of my sacred rite is uh, uh, fall, okay? The season of, yeah. So anyway, everybody goes around and does that, but the person who's the outsider has to figure out what that word is by the end of the, by, by the time everybody goes around, or, and they have to try to say something that doesn't make them look like a complete fool, you know? And so... Um, it it's so good the very first time we played everybody went around and i was that i was the first outsider so a family of five were playing and there's a single outsider in a five player game and i was the outsider and everybody was saying things that were like close like proximity wise close and i said i'm gonna go with the word circle i think my tradition was shape and i said the shape of our sacred rite is circle and everybody was like Okay. Okay. And then it gets to the end. Nobody, nobody thought it was me. Everybody's pointing at everybody else. And I'm like, what was it that I, so circle was right. So I just guessed the word was family. She, Aaron flipped over the card. It was family. I couldn't believe it, <laughs> but it was because of the little clues. And, and yeah, so that's literally the chameleon. Yes. Bob's right. This is chameleon but with a different skin and a different feel. And it is really, really fun. Like we busted up laughing um, because part of it, part of the game is that when somebody says the, the, uh, the drink of our sacred right is chocolate milk. Everybody else at the table has to in unison say, ah, chocolate milk. And so you, the stupidest things come out of your mouth as you're around right. the table. It's just silly and, fun. Yeah, it's just, and the components are great. They're wooden and they're they're fun. They feel good. Um, this surprised us. We played this many times during Christmas because every time we got it to the table, we were laughing. You know. Yeah, it's so, awesome. Yeah. Uh, so Justin asked, "Is the Scooby Doo gamer playable?" It is not. It is not. It's a one and done. Yeah. It is two. It's technically uh, like a chapter one, chapter two. Uh, each chapter takes, uh, it took us like a little over an hour, I think. So there's a break where you can say, okay, you can play half of this. You can pack it away and get it back out if you want later. But yeah, it's a one and done. Now, that being said, it's a one and done for your family. And then you yeah. can repack it up and give it to somebody else. It's not an exit, tear it apart one and done. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually need to put mine back together so I could loan it to some of our friends that want to try it. Yeah, I, I packed it back together and sent to, uh, gave it to Rick. Um, it 
so you guys are you guys have to be smarter than we are because it took us about three and a half hours to <laughs> to, to solve it. It was like <laughs> close to the four hour mark. Did um, you have two playing it? Uh, so the first time it was four of us playing, well, okay. three of us and one person watching TV and halfway playing it. And then the <laughs> second, the second half of it was just two of us, just yeah, Aaron and I We so. played four on both ends. It may have helped a little. It, it probably was, did. Yeah. Yeah. TV was off. So yeah. Yeah. 10 families, so. two bucks a piece. Yeah. Bob knows what's up. Yeah. Good there we go. Yeah. It, it's a, it's <laughs> a great game though. So um, what's a game. So what's a game that you didn't get in 20, 20- 2020 that you're still like you could still see yourself saying you know what i'm gonna find that game i think i have one um did you see justin's comment on his his game that he uh was his big surprise there no what was yours scroll scroll down a little bit there okay marvel united nice have you played marvel united i have not have you um no i did back it um okay it's actually my my first and only um on that's what they want to be called now right uh, my first and only backing from them and yeah. um i I'm a, I'm a marvel geek uh, yeah, specifically yeah. venom stuff yeah uh, like i'm looking at my wall over here it's just covered in venom posters and memorabilia awesome. stuff and they once they had the venom chibi figure it's like oh i'm in um so i didn't pay extra to get it early Mm-hmm. but I still ended up getting it early. So, okay. but it's sitting on my shelf. I'd like to play it. I just haven't gotten around to it. Yeah. It's a co-op game and it's superheroes, which is yeah. two things my wife is not a fan of. Uh, okay. So it'll be a son and I game at some point, but yeah, I look forward to trying it out for sure. Yeah. That's really cool. I didn't. Uh, so I think I'm in that boat of, I want to try it. I don't know if I need to own it because right. the Marvel games, even though my son is a big Marvel fanatic, um, I, I'm Marvel's fine. Like I'm excited about the unmatched Marvel sets that are coming out. Um, I'm pretty pumped about those just because we're huge fans of unmatched. Um, So I don't know. It's, it's one that I could see trying, but I don't know that I would own it. It's fair. Yeah. Um, As far as a game that I would still like to acquire, Mm -hmm. uh, didn't get in on the Kickstarter, seen everybody talking about it. JT is one of our guys in our group. Uh, This was his, favorite game of uh of 2020 and that was uh dwellings of elder vale yeah and, yeah uh, i'd love to try it i'm sure i'm gonna love to own it uh, my understanding is they're going back to kickstarter with a big box and expansion sometime this year so i can wait till then and, and grab it then but i've heard nothing but amazing stuff yeah. about that game i forgot that i can show uh people's uh people's comments <laughs> on here so rick you're I agree with a shout out for being (laughs) shut your ridiculous mouth. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. So, um, yeah, uh, dwelling is Velderbell. I played that as a prototype in, uh, at Southern fraud gaming expo and it was, it was really good. Um, I don't know if it's a game that I would play often enough, but I would definitely like, if somebody was like, Hey, we're playing this, I would jump in. Um, most definitely it's, it's really good. Um, the one that I missed was bees. I actually, uh, this is the one from next move games. Yep. Um, really cool B figures with little dial things on them. I'm really interested because it looks kind of puzzly. Um, but it, it's also, you know, the components are fantastic. I really want to try that. You know, it's, it, I think the B, the honeybee thing, it just, there's something that draws me to it. Um, yeah. I definitely like honey, buzz. honey buzz. That was fantastic. Played it at tantrum con. The, I, uh, I played it at the, uh, best con of 2020. Um, the best and only con of 2020 tantrum con. Fair. So Fair. yeah. Um, but yeah, I played it at tantrum con and it was so good. And I was like, Oh man, I missed out on this one. So yeah, it's a lot of good choices. That's the tough part, right? Yeah. Uh, Rick, with the puns, are you buzzing with excitement? Shut up. <laughs> Jeez. He told me he was going to jump into the comments and, and pick on me. So he said that doing this doing this uh, video chat with you is basically cheating on him. So, yeah. I told so. the other three guys that I was going to be coming. I haven't seen any of them comment. So, you know, it 
it appears it's okay. It appears our, our game of sidekicks group has more of an open relationship. So <laughs> <laughs> it's only Rick. Bob's fine with it. So, um, yeah, Bob's here. He's cheering us along. Yeah, yeah. So Justin said he just added Honey Buzz to his Atlantis Rising uh, expansion plus yeah pledge. That's really good. Yep. So. No, oh, there's Stuart. Cool. There's one. There's one of my there's four. Stuart. There we yep. go. There we go. <laughs> Boom. So, yeah, Fair you're enough. missing out yes. on all of it. So, so Isaac, that was pretty much the show this time. This time yeah. around. So this is uh this is the, the first, first show. <laughs> we don't really have a name for it. The game chat. I don't know. Yeah, it's okay. something. If you have a better name, you know, shoot us and shoot us an idea. Uh, anyway, so yeah, thanks so much for joining us. This was yeah, a lot was of fun, fun to do. And uh, if you like any of the games that you heard about, you can find coverage of those games at Gaming with Sidekicks and at One Board Family. We talk about all this junk all the time. It's so good. So absolutely. Where? Uh, so what's your what's your best uh, social media spot? Like where do you, where do you like to put? Because we have lots of places we put social media. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like where where do you like to put? M- content the most like do you have a favorite like favorite spot that you like to put stuff out on yeah so i would i would probably say facebook because i feel even though it's hit or miss you know you'll pay you'll post something to facebook and it'll get like three likes and nobody comments and i'm like oh that was a bummer and then you post something else that's like 40 likes and 10 people are talking about it and somebody yeah. shared it and i'm like <laughs> i didn't even like what i posted you know um I would say I would say Facebook, even though it's hit or miss, um, and That's we're fair. getting better about YouTube. We we neglected YouTube for long enough, and now we are making content at least weekly for YouTube. So it's a good way to do it. Yeah, we enjoy Facebook interaction. We have a you know gaming with sidekicks board game community group, which is fun to chat in. Yeah, and, uh, I, I personally I really like doing Instagram. I try and stay on there and. Mm-hmm. Make that. Ball wrong because I, I just I like looking at pictures of games. You know, yeah, I like yeah. taking a break. And there's and, some good pictures of games oh, out there. Man. There's some nice stuff. Uh, really Angelica today posted some amazing mm-hmm. Honey Buzz photos, and there's just I some. I gotta go look for them now. Oh, uh, it was really really good. So there's just there's good content and good good yeah. work out there. But yeah, it's fun stuff. So look for us both. Uh, we're both uh, sharing stuff out there. Absolutely, with you guys. yeah. Facebook and instagram and all that stuff uh, rick has a suggestion for the show it's called Ooh. infidelity the show i don't know that's gonna work for our family approach there yeah i feel like it's gonna really draw <laughs> the families away from it and probably a whole nother group of people that <laughs> might not be interested in these types of games so yeah, not 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 our target audience yeah yeah so anyway cool uh isaac thanks so much for coming on and like Ooh. doing this and hopefully our two communities um get to game together soon hopefully so i hope so absolutely thanks for having me sir all right thanks man have a good night see you guys